Investing is one of those things that just seems so complex and comprehensive that it just deters a lot of people from starting. They just don't know where to start. And you know, I used to be that person and I remember how that felt. So this is a video just based on that. What I would tell my old self, how to start, what I should know about learning how to invest. If I'm an absolute beginner, if I'm the average person who just, you know, I went to school, you know, I'm working and I just want to know where do I put my money? How do I start investing? This is what this video is going to be about. So this video is investing for absolute beginners. This is going to help you get started and give you the things that you should know and think about it when it comes to what you're going to end up needing to know to invest your money. And hopefully this helps you take that initial push that it takes to really get into the market. Or if you're already in the market and already investing, this will give you some things to think about in the long term when it comes to investing. Because what a lot of people mean when they're talking about saving for retirement is they're basically investing their money and then their money starts growing on its own and eventually their money becomes so big that that 8% return, if you have $100, $108, if you have $10,000, that's 800. If you have a million dollars, that's 80 grand a year for free coming from your money that you saved up you basically live off of your prior investments. When you retire, that's what you're doing. You're living off of your investments. So how do we go about doing that now so we can benefit from investing in the future? By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Fly Stewie. I connect investing to pop culture and let's get better at investing together. Feel free to leave a like because it really helps push these videos out. It helps that YouTube algorithm and comment below what your best investing advice that you heard in your life was and how that helps you invest or get ready or th start thinking about investing. So investing for absolute beginners. If you're starting up investing or you're early in your life at investing, um, one of the first things that you really need to start thinking about yourself is risk. So risk is really broken down in two things, how much can you take and how much you want to take. So when it comes to how much risk can you take, that depends on how old you are and how long you plan on working. If you're young, 20, 25, and you plan on working for the next 40 years, then you really can mess up a lot in the stock market and still come up on top because you have so much money time to make your money back. However, if you're older and you want to retire in the next five years, you can't really take that much risk. So your investments will have to be safer. Now, the second part, how much risk you want to take or how much your risk tolerance, this is all depends on individuals. There's some people who are planning to work for the next 40 years, but still want to invest safely and get that almost guaranteed 8% return that the stock market is expected to give it to you if you just keep your investments within stocks. So really asking yourself the two questions, how much risk can I take and how much risk do I want to take will start helping you ask yourself these questions and be able to start building what type of stock portfolio you will have for yourself. Number two is your portfolio allocation. Now, when it comes to investing, before you invest, you're probably going to talk with a financial advisor at your bank or with the company you're investing in. And having all of these in your mind will help you decide what's best for you and help you build a portfolio. If you're doing it yourself, one of the things that you really need to understand is portfolio allocation. So back to that risk thing we were talking about. Me personally, I'm a pretty risky dude. So I have around like 80% of my money safe and around like 20 to 30% of my money is just like aggressive play money. This is the money that is either going to make me bank or going to be set on fire. Think of, you know, something super safe an investment. So think of the safest investment of them all. That's putting your money in a savings account and then making you like 1% interest in a year, which is nothing versus throwing your money into Bitcoin and hoping that it's worth a trillion dollars in the next five years. This is how you are going to think about allocating your money. 
me personally what i do is i put my money in somewhat safe pretty safe um investments so think about that eight percent almost guaranteed money that i was talking about that is investing into etfs now if you haven't heard of etf investing essentially all this is doing is you're putting your money into a diversified asset an asset that's basically worth 500 companies are taking like a little chunk of 500 companies buying little pieces of that and if all of those 500 companies go up then you get a profit if all of them go down then you lose some money but one company sinking basically is not going to tank your investment you need the whole america economy to sink for you to really lose money et investing is very safe because you're diversified which is a magical word of saying your eggs aren't all in one basket you own a bunch of companies so as the the water lifts all boats you will make money in your investments now that 20 percent of that money if you're risky like me you get to decide now that 20 percent of risk money that you have if you're like me you get to decide what do you want to do with that risky money for me i have a couple of things personally i invest in nba sports cards i invest in nfl sports betting you know following some other person's trade picks I invest in Bitcoin. I actually day trade with leveraged foreign currencies. I do a lot of, and I actually day trade stocks too. I do a lot with that 20% and different ways to invest it on a more risky basis. That's not necessarily passive like my other investing. However, that's just me. 20% could be 5%, could be 1%, or it could be 0% for you. If you want to make money, then it really depends on your risk tolerance. And then that risk tolerance will basically outline your portfolio allocation that you use. So really writing it down and understanding yourself and what you want to accomplish will really help you build your investment portfolio. Now, number three is what I call a budgeting strategy. And this is really just a lifestyle strategy. And again, this is goes back to really understanding what you want to do with your life. So I have this little thing when it comes to budgeting for me is like, and it goes like this. It's like, what will make me the happiest that cost the cheapest? If you know yourself like this, it will slash your budgeting in like half. So for me, I knew that I could live in a small space, um, but I just needed to live by myself. So my rent is super cheap because of that. I know I like, you know, to go out, but I, you know, I don't really buy that much stuff when I'm out. Um, I know I don't really like clothes that much, so I buy cheap clothes. I know I like vacation, so maybe I vacation once a year. You know, asking yourself, what are your big purchases and what's the cheapest versions of those that will still give you that maximum amount of happiness will help you save money. Budgeting is really just knowing yourself and being able to build a lifestyle that you want about yourself. So of course, budget, my biggest recommendation is download an app called Mint. You can't necessarily know how to save money if you don't know where your money is going. Mint.com is an app that really allows you to see where all your finances goes. It will categorize everything automatically if you use a credit card. And this way you'll be able to save so much money because you know where that money's going. So make sure you have a budgeting strategy. This will help you save money and that money that you're saving, you'll have more to invest at the end of the month. Now, number four, you really need an investing strategy. So if with all that money that you're putting in your portfolio, your portfolio allocation, if you will, you need to know when are you planning to do with that money? Are you planning to buy a boat? Are you planning to pay for your school tuition? Are you planning to pay for your children's tuition? Are you planning to live off this in retirement? What are the goals for your money? If your money's goals are for a house, then you cannot touch that money until you buy a house. If it's for retirement, you cannot touch that money until retirement. Having goals and not constantly taking money out when you need a new purchase will help you keep that money in there for the long term and help you buy stocks around that long term objective that you have. Remember that ETF cool thing that I was talking about? If you have a goal of, of in 10 years, you want to buy a house 
Well, you know that ETFs are pretty good in holding their value for 10 years. You're may pretty much, you know, guaranteed that 8%, but at the end of the 10 years, it could be a market downturn. So you might have to hold it for 15 years if you want that 8%. But just having that goal in mind will help make sure that you don't withdraw that money too soon and incur losses. That way, when the market goes up or down or up or down, it doesn't matter because you're planning to take that money out like 15 years from now. So knowing your investment strategy, knowing that you're gonna put your money in the long term will help that. Now, remember that risk 20% of risk money I was talking about that I had? Personally, those are for short term goals. So if I lose it, it's whatever. If I double it, it's whatever. It doesn't matter. If I take some amount, it doesn't matter. If I put some minute, it doesn't matter because I don't really necessarily have some long term necessarily goals with it. It's essentially play money. This is me investing for the fun of it. And it doesn't really affect my overall investment history if I lose that money. So if you're passionate about investing, then of course, having a higher risk amount is you know something that can help you get big gains but if you're not that passionate about investing then i wouldn't be too risky i'd probably back down on the risk unless you really have a really concrete understanding of where you're putting that money number five now that you know your investment strategy your portfolio allocation your risk you're ready to pick your investing app that you want to use so realistically depending on what type of goals you have for yourself you need to pick an investing app that really satisfies those goals. So what I would recommend is one, if you're beginning investing, you want something that has basically no fees. Like you want to buy stocks and ETFs and pay no fees. So look at stuff that like Robinhood or M1 Finance, like these are ones that have pretty low fees, but then there's other ones too. Make sure you do your research and find the ones that have low, low to no fees or they don't charge for you buying ETFs. Maybe a mixture of some will help, but investing that first thousand dollars, if you're paying $10 when you buy and $10 when you sell, it's going to eat into your profits. So you can avoid those type of investing apps like the plague. So number six, you are ready to buy that now that you know the investing app you're gonna use, you have your portfolio allocation, you have to get ready to buy. And when it comes to buying, you have to know which account you're gonna use. What is your buying strategy? Are you gonna buy in a Roth IRA? Are you gonna buy in a 411k? Are you just gonna use a normal investing account or maybe a margin account? These are all a bunch of different terms that satisfy different goals. So this is just when it comes to buying, when you sign up for these apps, just basically get a general understanding of what these different tax-free savings accounts are, or maybe a different accounts. Like when you buy stocks in a tax-free account, you do not pay taxes when you make money. So that's great. So you probably want to use a Roth IRA or, you know, 401k, depending on your strategy, but you have to look into these, um, essentially, Roth IRA, maybe for more short term 401k, uh, you're not going to take that out basically to retirement, uh, figure out what's best for you. And that way you can start buying stocks to build your wealth. The biggest thing when it comes to buying is just start, just start buying, just start getting into the market. Um, the best way to really do it, I would recommend is just buy ETFs just buy index fund ETFs and never sell. Until you really understand what you're doing, just buy ETFs and never sell. That's the best advice I can give you. Buy ones, a cool ticker to look up is SPY, SPHD. Until you really understand um, you know, a lot about the market, Hey, Daniel, thanks for the subscription, buddy. I really appreciate it. Until you really understand uh, stuff about the market, really just buy ETFs, look them up, watch as much ETF explained, much ETF 101 videos as you can, get that knowledge in, and just start putting money into investing because guess what? $100,000 is cool, but a penny doubled every day will be like a trillion dollars by the end of the year. Compounding of money 
is going to basically build your wealth for you. Don't work for yourself, have your money work for you and your wealth will be built in no time. Anyways, this has been another Fly Stewie video. If you have questions, feel free to put them down below. Anything, I'll answer what I can. And the best, most brightest investors are the uneducated ones. Why is that? Because the uneducated investor, they never stop learning. Remember, if you like this video, leave a like, baby. <laughs> Subscribe and hit that bell. It really helps the channel grow. And again, Flight Crew, thank you guys for rocking with us man you you awesome baby more investing videos to come i post here every monday wednesday and friday and i try to get these videos out let me know any other topics that you want to like listen to and we flight crew have to take off easy baby easy